Brian, this of course is the Tom O'Brien Show. We're going to be joined today by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle, uh, about 3.15. Uh, so make sure you sit right there and wait for that because I know he's going to have a lot of interesting stuff to say, especially because we've had uh, quite a few sessions right now. The SPY closing up a little bit higher. Of course, the market really being pretty confident with these rate cuts here, getting a lot of juice uh, to the upside on it, trading at 571.95, all-time highs in the composite, in the Dow. I mean, this is uh, pretty fantastic, right? I mean, the Dow Jones Industrial right now is 42,097, composite trading at 18,000, up 2.71 uh, as it stands now. And, and yeah, I mean, everything you kind of expected to happen happened with that rate cut. Let's take a look at NVIDIA today. That is up, if it loads, it's gonna be up uh, some of these percent, up 4.42%. Same with Tesla. I mean, we're, we're riding here, right? Tesla up 6.88%. Everything's moving pretty high. Crude, trading at $71, still up in that upper trading range, trading at 160. Uh, you have the DXY trading at 163, so that is still in its lower uh, range right there, which is kind of nice. And again, the more of this dollar goes down, I think, as it stands now, we're kind of priced at least in the dollar um, for the potential rate cuts. And since we really did, again, I said it wasn't a roadmap, which is important to keep in mind, it was not a roadmap, but what they're anticipating is what Powell said yesterday during the FOMC. They're seeing a rate of 4.4% uh, by the end of 2024, and then 3.4 uh, in 2025. And you're kind of seeing that occur as well in, if I can take a look here, in the bonds, right, in the treasury yields. So obviously we're still, you know, pretty front loaded right now. Your three month and six month are kind of out of whack, but even the three month itself is just about 30 basis points above that 4.4 anticipated for the end of 2024. You have the 12 month at 3.96 and the 10 year at 3.74. So, I mean, this kind of is basically in line with, with what some of the Fed was saying as well. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see that stabilization. So I, I could probably see us staying around this level uh, in the dollar uh, for some certain time. Now, of course, what's super nice with this lower dollar is uh, you're getting this massive pump up in gold, right? So we're trading at 2,612 and 80 cents in gold. Uh, pretty fantastic, still off that high right there, at least that tick up at 2672. Uh, but again, you know, priced in dollars, dollar gets cheaper, everyone gets more gold. You're having a lot of issues still with China, right? You're getting some slowing activity over there. They've kind of halted their massive gold buying spree, which over this year really did uh, kind of feed in to this higher spot price in the gold courses in the futures here. Uh, but regardless, it all kind of influences the same thing. So we'll see what happens. If China can ease a little bit now, of course, you know, dollar gets cheaper, their yuan gets a little bit stronger with potential deflation. Um, you, know, you could see uh, renewal and some buying, but kind of wait to see what happens with that. Copper is moving up as well, which is great. Uh, trading at 434 currently, uh, and then the silver contract trading up 1.88 at 31.26. Apple doing okay today, right? So trading up about 3.85 currently. Let me just get this on a larger chart so I can see it. And uh, this is actually after some news that the iPhone 16 sales uh, were as good. Luckily, T-Mobile came out and said, hey, listen, we are selling more of these than we had anticipated, and uh, it's pretty fantastic. Let me see if I can get that story up for you guys as well. Uh, but it's nice. I still think, you know, it's a shame in some sense. Uh, not a shame. I mean, these guys are doing fine, right? But you had a lot of, you know, kind of fallout, essentially, too, a few days ago when they were saying the iPhone 16s weren't selling as well. Um, I mean, you're seeing ARM go down, all the kind of semiconductor uh, producers as well. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see... Apple move up with it, but again, I still feel like they're not, you know, I think in a way, um, innovating in any any major way, which makes sense, right? I mean, how many times, sorry, I'm trying to pull this up for you here. It makes sense, right? I mean, how many times can you kind of redo the wheel on this? Um, I, I do think with the advent of Apple intelligence, that no doubt will drive kind of sales. I don't think that's really included on this right now, right? It comes a little bit later, uh, but we already saw with you know, personal laptops, um, personal computers that had uh, AI built into them, uh, that sales were extraordinarily strong. So, you know, when that kind of rolls out with Apple, I think we'll see um, some actually meaningful reason uh, to kind of get this. But uh, according to T-Mobile, we'll take a look at this real quick. 
An interview on Wednesday on CNBC, T-Mobile CEO Mike Sievert said that his company is seeing more sales of the iPhone 16 uh, than last year's series of smartphones. Apple officially will begin the iPhone 16 sales on Friday after a week of pre-orders. The enhanced handsets range from the regular iPhone 16 up to the top of the line iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max models. The delayed rollout of our artificial intelligence features, branded Apple Intelligence, might lengthen the buying cycle for the iPhone 16. The first batch of AI features will be in a software update in October. I think you get really the full rollout in either 17 or 18 for that, right? But regardless, that totally is going to drive sales um, for Apple, no doubt. So it's nice to kind of see that happen for the stock and kind of save the day a little bit. Everyone always gets baked out with it. I remember a few when they had their, uh, you know, their, their big event where they talk about what the upcoming thing's going to be. No one was really impressed, kind of sold off a little bit, and then we came right back up on it. Um, let's also see as well, the banks are kind of killing it today, especially with the lower rates. And it's such a good position in any way to be a bank, right? You get higher rates, you get higher uh, returns on whatever you lend out. And then, of course, on lower rates, more people are buying your money. So you kind of get to expand your sheet that way. Uh, JP Morgan trading up 1.73. Uh, Goldman Sachs up. I mean, it's, let's, let's take a look at Goldman Sachs as well. But, you know, when you have this planned movement down, right, you really, when you when we really start enjoying these kind of lower rates, like going into the latter half of uh, 2025, you start seeing a lot of borrowing start coming up. Bank of America up. Morgan Stanley up 1.81%. Yeah, so pretty nice for the banks. Uh, some interesting news is with AMC, right? And I'm interested in this, because this stock gets memed quite a bit. So we're off a little bit. I think this is what I'm going to be looking at here. They have the largest theater chain, right? So this gets memed uh, pretty consistently. A lot of volatility. You have a lot of bag holders, uh, basically from people online playing in this. And I'm surprised on this news you're not getting too much of a bump up. But uh, they're actually, along with Regal, are going to invest more than $2.2 billion over the next three years to upgrade theaters in the U.S. and Canada. The industry group announced on Thursday, if you start getting like more exposure to that, I could see this stock going volatile again because people want to play around with it. And uh, that might bring you uh, some pretty good opportunities. So keep your eyes peeled uh, for that. Folks, you stay right there. We're going to be right back with Tim Ord of Ord Oracle.